we will need some rule, and uh, I think this is uh, an area where Professor Suzuki is active for many years. So can you please tell us where we are in the, in the governance and where do you see the path forward? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, World Policy Conference. I'm, this is the second time, and I'm very really happy that the space is now on the agenda. And I think um, we are now in the phase of the space 2.0, and uh, Space 1.0 is the image of this. The American astronauts having a stars and stripe on the patch here, and you know everything is done by the big countries. But today, the Space 2.0 is all about the democratization. Everyone uh, is now the, the participants in the, in the space activities, including um, UAE, and I think the UAE is now playing a very important role to be as a hub of the international cooperation. So that increasing number of the participants in the space is the one thing. The second is the commercialization. We do have a lot of uh, you know, the commercial activities here in, in this panel. So commercialization is not like this. I mean, the, there are a number of private funds and the private actors are now involved and these are, not, these are different from the traditional um, actors in governance. The third is the militarization. Uh, you know, the space is now being used for the military purposes in a lot, and the commercial services like Starlink is used for the uh, military services. I mean, if you look at the, in the case of UA, uh, the U war in Ukraine, that the U U Ukraine doesn't own the space assets, but they are extensively using space for the military purposes, and they are very successful of doing that. But on the other hand, that is creating the fourth point, which is the vulnerability of these space assets. Because these commercial uh, space assets, as well as government ones, are now being used to make a difference in the war fighting field, then it may have the uh, very important, uh, important point of attacking those space assets and destroying the capabilities of space. So that means that the space, well, space is generally a vulnerable asset. You know, the space is, you, there is no place to hide. You know, the trajectory and orbits are easy to detect. And then, you know, you can shoot down or you can, you can uh, jam the, the radio waves or you can do the co-orbital, which means, the, you know, the, the killer satellite just following the, the other satellite, you know, there are there are a lot of ways to to uh, to disrupt the services from from space. So in that sense, I think the space today is very important to have the some sort of a rule of road and to make sure that we do have some sort of governance because space is very unique because there is no borders, there is no area denial. You know, space. Everything is moving, you know, the only law it, it defines the this, this space activity is the law of physics and, you know, everything just being um, not working as it, the, the terrestrial, um, terrestrial rules can be applied. So it's, it's a different, different ball game and we need to think of the different or creative method of understanding the how to use uh, how to use space uh, or how to govern space, and particularly with regard to the commercial assets, is important because the you know um, the the extensive commercialization of space is now making it possible for everyone, to, including the private actors, using space for you know some sort of. A in military purposes. I mean, for example, if you if you read the newspapers, the newspaper buys a very sophisticated Earth observation uh, images, which are, are close to the, uh, uh, the 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 sharpness of the spy satellite. So everyone is now being able to have the e almost equivalent capabilities of uh, of monitoring surveillance uh, surv uh, to to. To, for the for the reconnaissance of what happened in Russia in Ukraine, and you know these capabilities may be used uh, uh, and maybe blur the the boundary between the public and the private private actors, and I uh, the 
so these increasing number of actors because of the democratization, because of the commercialization, and the much more complex use of space for a variety of purposes, how do we govern this space? And it's, it, we can't really apply the, you know, the traditional international law where you know, the, you know, certain area is defined by the certain countries and, and the other area is, is others. So what we need to do is to build up the norm to govern the global commons. And the, the, there has been some attempts to, uh, to build up the norms. Uh, the European Union has uh, engaged in the activities to, um, to build up the International Code of Conduct, which was unfortunately not successful. The Russia and China is trying to build up the, uh, a new treaty, which is law binding, uh, legally binding uh, rules to, uh, to prevent the use of space for the military purposes. But again, this was not very successful. So I think we are, we are now, ne we need to do something uh, from a different approach. And one of which is the open-ended working group, uh, which is conducted uh, uh, under the auspices of United Nations General Assembly, uh, which was uh, initially the UK's uh, initiative, but uh, also Japan is part of it. And I think these uh, uh, norm building uh, exercises is now being a very important uh, part, but um, I think this is gradually sharing the, um, sharing the understanding that the space is a global commons, so that even the, uh, the conflicting, um, uh, conflicting actors needs to control space and control their behavior. And what is interesting in the case of war in Ukraine is that the Russia, even though it has a capability of disrupting and destructing the um, the satellites, the commercial satellites, as well as the U.S. satellite, which provide services for Ukraine, the Russia doesn't really do that. The Ru for, first of all, it's because the, num the new technology called the Constellation, like uh, Starlink, you know, 2,000, 3,000 satellites, you can't really shoot down the 3,000 satellites at once. So uh, this um, new technology is just uh, creating a situation where the shooting down the satellite or disrupting the sat satellite services is no longer possible. And the other thing is the deterrence. The, if, because the satellite belongs to certain countries, therefore it can be claimed that you know, the attacking on the satellite is the act of war and then exercise the self-defense. So if the Russians attacking on the American satellite, then it is automatically creates the situation where the, the Russia is f fighting against the, the United States. So this deterrence is another way of governing the, the, the international uh, rules and based on these uh, you know new technology the constellation and risk risk evasions and also um, the deterrence and then we build up the uh, norm discussion uh, in the open ended working group under the united nations and i think this is the this is the currently ongoing uh, effort of building the uh, international governance in space stop here thank you thank you professor suzuki for for the picture uh,